I wanted to start my own CNC plasma cutting business, but instead of buying a new machine, I opted to build my own. So I went to the internet. I found these guys and took their ideas and made them have bait. Today, I'm making a small adjustment with a big impact. We're saying goodbye to these <laughs> plastic parts and popping in brand spanking new 6061 aluminum pieces. You see, I had the desire to make this machine more than just a hobbyist abused plaything. I want to make this into a professional level machine capable of production. That means I have to use high quality lasting parts. But how do I do that if I don't have the equipment to make those parts? You go to the internet. For me, I went to my local Nextdoor app. For there, I asked if there was anyone with any CNC milling services available. Lo and behold, we had a few. So I sent out a few drawings, and after some negotiation, in a few weeks, bam! This sexy beast of a <gasps> chunk of metal landed on my doorstep. The only thing left to do was to install it and test it out. And that began by disassembling the old 3D printed parts. So you guys already saw this at the beginning, but I, I, this is, this is why I can't do 3D prints. Maybe it would have been stronger if I did 100% infill? No idea. When I first had these made, I went ahead and made two because, as you'll soon see, I didn't know if it would work out the first time. As for the second one, I actually gave it to one of our subscribers. Congratulations, Jack. And if you would like to get in on future giveaways, go ahead and subscribe as well. Okay, now that I'm actually somewhere quiet, I did have to end up dishing out the inside of that uh, radius more because the thin walled tubing had a tighter radius. That's something I didn't account for. So I'm gonna go send one of those parts back to the machinist and see if he can correct my mistake and we'll go from there. But other than that, once I ground it out, much more rigid. The piece I installed on my own personal machine is the piece I ground out by hand, but don't worry. The piece I gave away was sent back to the machinist and he did a wonderful job at fixing my mistakes. After some quick assembly, this is how it looked. While up front, there's really not much of a difference from the plastic version, the real triumph comes when this thing sits outside in the elements and cuts through a few sheets. All of the high temp sparks and water flying everywhere, it, they don't stand a chance. These are the other pieces that I had done right away, just to hold the torch together, but throw a few bolts back there, and then we have one for the front of the torch and then the body of the torch so you'll you'll see what i'm talking about i've already noticed a new design change i like to implement sometime down the road to have both torch mounts attached to the body of the torch and not the head just in case i want to change consumables without removing the mount those dang engineers if i had a dime for every time i had to fix one of their stupid ups well i'd be richer than okay, it's getting kind of late but i wanted to see this thing run with that new aluminum piece on here so I go out, got a test bolt circle. I need to find something better to do after work. Here I'm just testing all of the motions and making sure nothing is binding and everything is all squared up. I think I may have the bearings adjusted too tightly because on the long moves you can see this basically vibrating back and forth. Oh yes. Oh yeah, so those need to be loosened up. It also doesn't help that I don't have the spacers in there for the bearing but so what i learned after a few trial and errors and looking up a cnc forms is that the wobble i was seeing was most likely due to the belt driven system there are small variations in how the belts and timing pulleys are manufactured and since the two y-axis motors are not mechanically bound this allows the machine to rack back and forth ever so slightly so that's noted for the next build. Finally, I'm getting started on some cable management. I'm hoping it's going to tie everything together and make it look nice and neat. So here I'm plasma cutting out the profile on a larger Messer plasma cutter. I threw this in here because I wanted to show you guys the speed and power and accuracy of some higher end cutters. 
For example, these 12 gauge raceways, I believe it was cutting at 80 amps and around 160 inches per minute. This thing flies. Not only that, Woo! we use this machine to cut all the way up to an inch and a half material. I'll have to try and get a video of that, but talk about sparks flying everywhere. As you can see, I'm finally starting to get this press brake dialed in. It turns out I had so much trouble with the water pan because one of our operators had the tooling defined incorrectly. Just goes to show you don't know what you don't know. Here's a quick look at the raceways installed. I went the cheap and fast way and just threw a bunch of self-tapping screws in to secure everything in place. Of course, they still needed to be painted black because once you go black, you never want to use another color again. Okay, gonna run a test here to see how this extra weight, how the two steppers handles that extra weight. Um, I'm gonna be adding that cable way into there too, which isn't really that much heavier, but this is uh, quite a bit heavier 12 gauge material. I was gonna make it, make it out of 16, but I didn't have anything readily available for that. And it is quite wide. If I need to make another one, I can cut out some circles or shapes inside of here to make it lighter, reduce the weight. But I'm gonna see how it handles right now. That's good at a low speed. Uh, bump the speed up to 100. Seems to be doing just fine. So if that works, I will keep it. I'll throw some more cell tappers in there with a spacer or something in the square tube. But I think that'll work good. I have that drag chain across here and then one across here. So this guy will actually feed into that through the top. I'll have to make probably another mounting bracket that comes off the top of here with an extension. And that's as pretty much as far as I've gotten since the beginning of June. But I do have a pricing update for the 6061 aluminum bearing block for you guys. If you check my website, uh, that information's already posted, but I have it listed as not in stock but that's gonna change soon. The pricing that I came to the conclusion on was, I'm gonna start selling these at $185 a piece. Wow. I know most of you wanted me to stick around the uh, $100 to $50 range, but that's just not realistic for me. As it sits now, the $185 is pretty much as low as it can get. And I'm not sure how long or how many pieces I'll have at this price. I've sent multiple quotes to multiple different machinists and they've consistently came back at around that 200 to even $400 range per piece. Which personally, I think that's a little ridiculous, but I really can't do anything about that. That being said, the guy that's making them for me now, he's cutting me a huge deal. Like I said, guys, if you wanna get these for super cheap, make sure you hop on that as soon as it's listed because I'm being completely honest, I'm not sure when that price is gonna change. Of course, as soon as I make them available, I'm gonna go ahead and make a community post on the YouTube page and inform all of you. Also, I just finished the redesign of the Y-axis bearing block. And let me tell you, it seems very promising. So I'm super excited about that. Stick around, there's definitely gonna be more updates coming soon. But yeah, that's all I have for now, guys. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you next time. You've seen where I'm going, now check out where I started. Go ahead, take a look at the other videos in this series.